This is Tom with the Crypto Crew, and today we're talking to Randall. How are you today, Randall? Oh, very good. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. It's a hot day here, but uh, we're, we're enjoying it. Yes. Uh, it's my understanding that you had uh, some uh, possible Bigfoot activity in your area. Uh, would you please start out telling us what state you're in? Yes, I'm in Central Mass. Um, I'm not I'm like uh, seven miles from the Quabbin Reservoir, so it's uh, it's pretty woodsy out here. You know, it's uh, very country. Okay, uh, can you tell us maybe what uh, what happened? Uh, what was going on? What was you doing? And what did you hear? What did you see? Sure. Um, I, well, I actually didn't see anything. It's, it's what I heard. Um, it was about one one o'clock in the morning, and um, I was in my parlor, and I had the TV kind of loud, but I, I heard a noise from outside, so I, I turned the volume off on the TV to see what it was, and I heard the strange noise, and it was coming from a from a distance, and it was um, it was some you could tell it was some kind of animal making a noise, but I couldn't tell. But eventually, it got closer and closer until it was like right outside my house, and it actually scared me because it, it sounded like it was coming from something very large. And it, the, the noise, um, I, I can't actually duplicate it because it was, it's not something like a human could do, I don't think. It, um, it sounded like, almost like a big ape, but it also was making like whistling sounds, like almost like birds uh, whistling sounds, like high pitched, you know, in between like those ape noises. It was, it was very, very weird. But it was also very scary, um, and cause I, like I said, I live out in the country, and and I'm out like on a corner of, of a, um, a lot, so there's, there's not even street lights out there. Um, but I was actually scared to even um, put the light on to see what it was because, I, you know, I, I live in the country, you know, for many years, and and I know all the animals, and th this was nothing that I've ever heard in my life. This was this was something very bizarre, and so what I did was I I, I listened on um, on YouTube, and I found an actual match for what I heard. Um, it was going back to um, the early 70s that show uh, In Search of a Leonard Nimoy, and he did a, um, a, a thing on um, Sasquatch in the, uh, in the Sierras, and he had a recording on there of, uh, you know, of what, they've, um, what they made out in the woods there, and um, it, was, it was an almost identical match. And a few days ago, I, I saw another one on YouTube that was recorded up in the Sierra also, and it sounded identical. And, um, and, and that one says this was an actual recording of a Sasquatch. So that's for right now. I'm I'm, I'm definitely a believer of something because I, I didn't see what it was, but it was no mistaking. It was like right outside my house. It was very very it was scary, and I had to go to work like an hour later. And <laughs> you know, you had, I had second thoughts when I was going to work, but I had to go to work. You know. Well, could you hear any uh, like brush breaking or anything like that? No, um, it, it, it was. Um, I just I, all I could hear was that that voice, and it was like it sounded like it was right on the other side of the wall of, of my house. No, uh, no, have, no thumping of foot tracks or anything like that. Didn't sound like. Um, no, it, it, and the net, what it was, it was heavy rain outside that night. It was, it was like the January thaw. It, it was in January. And it was about fifty-five degrees at night, and so there was patchy snow out there. The most of it had melted though during the day because we had that big rainstorm, and um, it was real foggy out that night. Now, when did this take I, place? This took place, it was like in the middle of January, so we had a, um, a heavy rainstorm, and it was, it was like a January thaw. It was real warm that night, and, you know, for January. It's usually like 20, 25 degrees out where I live at that time of the year, but that night it was the thaw, so it was really warm. Have there been any other reports in that area of uh, strange sounds or anything? Um, I, I did see a report on, um, it, was, it was on the Internet, that there were these policemen that when... Um, they were on hunting. This was um, out in the Brookfields. This was uh, last year, I believe. And um, they, they saw one when they were hunting. And they said it was not a bear, and they don't know what it was, but it was like four or five um, off-duty police officers saw it. Did you go out and look around uh, after it got daylight or uh, that evening looking for tracks when, or anything? Yeah, I had, I had to go to work, and when I came home, that's what I looked for. But I think all the heavy rain we had during the night and, and the ground was still frozen underneath, so it was kind of hard for it to leave a print or anything. Um, so I didn't see anything. But I, I can add to the story. Something happened last um, last Friday night, and it was about 7.30. It was just starting to get dark at my house. And um, and I heard two rocks were thrown through the woods, and it, they, hit, they bounced off the trees. And I, I didn't see anything because it's too much foliage. Uh, but I live right behind a big hill, and up on top of that hill there's, um, there's big rocks and there's, like, caves that was left from the glaciers. 
and it's, there's a lot of those deposits up in my area. Um, so I, I don't know what's up there, but, but you know, whatever was able to throw a rock, it, you, I could hear it whistling through and, you know, hit the trees coming down. And when there was two of them that was thrown, but I didn't see the stone. I, I could just hear it. Well, uh, to throw a rock, you basically have to have some kind of human type hand, uh, a deer or something like that's not going to pick up a rock and throw it. So it has to be something that's got a human type hand if it's throwing rocks. Yes, yes, I, I think you're right, sir. Uh, are you going to get out in the mountains and look around your property there? I mean, are you going to get out in the woods and look anymore? Or? Well, I, sir, to be honest with you, I, I don't know what it is. And, and I, you know, I've heard reports that the most part there, they don't bother people. But I don't know if you go into their domain. I, I don't know. I don't know how safe it is, <laughs> you know. But there's something there, you know. Well, now, it could be dangerous. There, there are... Uh, reports of uh, attacks and things like that and there's a lot of reports of rocks being thrown at people and stuff like that so if you do go out you know i would uh caution you you know to be be careful uh, but if you okay. if you if you get any more uh sounds if you can get uh, any recording of the sound that would be very helpful yes i, I will that's the only time i've ever heard that but it it lasted a good f um five minutes Wow. And it was it, it. What it did was those sounds. They were all the same. It was like a call. That's that's what it sounded like. It was the same thing over and over. Uh, and it would last maybe fifteen seconds, and it would pause, and then it would do it again. And um, it was very strange. Sounds like you could have some activity around your house. So you you know it might be uh, might be wise to sort of keep an uh, ear out for it and an eye out for it because it may be getting real close to your house. Do you know if, um, do they stay in one area or do they have, or no one really knows that? Or if they, uh, they move around looking for food or? Well, there's a, couple, like there's a couple of theories about that. Uh, some people think they migrate and uh, and it's not been actually proven, but I would imagine they, at times of the year, they do travel, maybe due to weather or due to food sources. I, that's, that's my opinion. I think they do travel around some. Oh, okay. Because I do know of reports where, uh, Maybe an area had a whole lot of activity a certain time of the year, then the fall and winter would come and the activity would totally disappear. So it may be oh. something that's just passing through, or it could be something that's going to stay around a while. Okay. I, I did have some um, some other information. I'm not sure what it is. My, my daughter was on a field trip at school last year, and she went out to the Quabbin. And they, they kind of went a little bit out of where they were supposed to be. And inside, like, there was like a mud area. And they, they got these tracks there that it was my, my yeah my daughter she's the one that uh, found it and she when she was on a field trip she sent me the pictures to my phone I still have those pictures um, I'm not sure if they were human or what they were um, but they they look you know kind of big you know well uh, could so I get you to send me those pictures any of those. what's that could I get you to send me those pictures in an email oh, or, or on Facebook or sure. something yes. Cause that that would be uh, that would be something interesting. How far is this from uh, where you actually live? Um, that's probably like a twenty minute ride, so it's probably maybe uh, fifteen miles. So that's not too far. No. And uh, I appreciate you doing the interview. And uh, if if you don't care, I'll uh, I'll send you a, maybe an email link to send me those pictures of the tracks. Sure. And we'll add that into the story. And uh, and if anything else develops, you you make sure to contact me. I definitely will. And I thank you. Thank you for doing the interview. Oh, you're welcome.